Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. December 8th, 2017. 205 here on the great WRKO. Okay, at 235, she lied. A key accuser of Judge Roy Moore, Beverly Nelson, now admits she forged the yearbook. Wow, wow, wow. We're going to discuss that and the implications. But first, a huge story down on the Cape. According now to the Cape Cod Times, there was a meeting Wednesday of the Barnstable County Assembly of Delegates, which apparently degenerated into chaos and shouting when the Speaker of the Board abruptly called its adjournment. Why? Because one of the delegates, Brian O'Malley of Provincetown, and his supporters, all of them defenders of illegal immigration, and in particular illegal criminals, now do not want the sheriff of Barnstable County, James Cummings, to participate in an ICE program, listen to this, in which, this is what Sheriff Cummings wants, that correctional officers would be able to look at ICE databases to determine, you know, if one of the prisoners in these correctional facilities, I don't know, murderers, rapists, burglars, whatever, if those being held on bail or without bail are in the United States illegally. And if they're illegals, maybe contact, you know, ICE and say, why should we release a murderer or a rapist into the population? Maybe, just maybe, they should be deported. For this, he is now becoming vilified by the radical left, and he's now the poster child of, they say, of transgressing the rights of illegal immigrants. It's an absolute travesty. Joining us now is the sheriff himself, Barnstable County Sheriff James Cummings. Sheriff Cummings, thank you so much for coming on the Cooner Report. Oh, thank you, Jeff. I'm glad to be here. Sheriff, I mean, it's, it's like a zoo down there in Cape Cod. Uh, what have you done? What are you proposing that has angered so many of these pro-illegal immigration activists? It's, uh, it amazes me, uh, you know, what, uh, uh, you know, how people want, now want me to be, because I'm going to be the one who's going to release these individuals back into our communities if they get what they want. Uh, the good news is there's not much chance of that. Uh, you know, the assembly doesn't have any authority over what I do, so I'm moving ahead with this anyhow. Uh, but, you know, it, it just shows you how this group has gone from, uh, you know, we want to protect the landscapers and the dishwashers to now they want to protect uh, people who are here illegal to begin with. And then while they're here, they get arrested for violating one of our laws. They don't want us to uh, prosecute them any further than that. They want us to just release them back into the uh, communities, which makes no sense to me whatsoever. Sheriff Cummings, I just want to get this straight, and you tell me if I'm somehow misstating this. What you want to do is participate in this federal program with ICE in which, say, somebody's already convicted, whatever, murder, rape, burglary, whatever it is, they're now being housed in this correctional facility, and you say, ooh, let's just say it's me, okay, just for the sake of argument, Jeff Cooner. Oh, look at Jeff Cooner. They arrested him for murder. Look at this. Hmm. Is Jeff Cooner in the country illegally? <gasps> he is. He's an illegal. Whoa. I'm going to put a, de- I'm going to ask ICE, uh, ask ICE if they want to deport him. I'm going to put a detainer on him. So when Jeff Cooner is eventually released into the population, he won't be. He can be deported back to his native Canada. Is that essentially what you want to propose for uh, your county? Uh, yep, the only correction I'd make is that they're not necessarily convicted, but they've been arrested and sent to the jail by the court uh, in most instances uh, to be held on bail because of the seriousness of the crime they committed well here. Um, but other than that, uh, it's it's right on the point. I mean, uh, and I'll give you an instance that came up that, that got me concerned months ago. Uh, um, we had an individual that was... Uh, uh, not an American citizen, was here illegally, was arrested for uh, assault and battery and child pornography, was sent here on $10,000 bail, 
and we you know we the way we do it now we do it by phone so we might have to wait uh, you know up to a week for ICE to get us the necessary paperwork but my concern was this fellow is being held here on assault and battery and child pornography and if someone came to the door with ten thousand dollars I would have to uh, release him back into the community and uh, you know that wasn't something I wanted to do because if he goes back into the community and then he murders somebody or something serious like that who's going to be the one that they said let him go <laughs> it's going to be the sheriff so uh, we want to speed up that process and by having uh, access to the ICE database we'll be able to to do that and we're not going to be doing anything we're not doing already we're just going to be able to do it a lot more efficiently and a lot quicker sheriff i'm just stunned at this have you spoken at all by the way to brian o'malley i have not why would he want a, a child pornographer a p pedophile maybe a murderer a rapist a thug a gangbanger released not only into the general population but back into the very communities that some of whom showed up at that meeting protesting the rights of these violent, illegal criminals. I mean, do they want more pedophiles in their communities, more rapists or gangbangers or murderers in their communities? Yeah, I, I don't understand that at all, Jeff. We have this group down here, uh, they're called the Cape Coalition for Safe Communities, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, they've had some success with a few towns in going around and trying to get the towns at town meetings to vote to be uh, safe communities. There may be a couple of towns in the Cape that have voted for this, but most towns have not voted for it. And uh, I give credit to my county commissioners down here. This this started with this group going to the county commissioners, and uh, instead of doing what this group wanted to do, the commissioners voted to support the program three to one. And I think I think if a vote's taken in the assembly, I think the majority of the delegates to the assembly will vote vote in favor of this program as well. Sheriff, between you and me, what do you think is the real motive for them opposing, to me, your very common sense program? Uh, is it They keep saying they want equal rights for all immigrants. Let me just play devil's advocate for a second. Uh, they say, look, uh, all immigrants deserve due process. All immigrants deserve to be treated equally. You, Sheriff Cummings by trying to look into somebody's immigration background, uh, you're not treating illegals the way you would treat legal Americans. What do you say to that argument? Well, actually, we, we, we're treating them exactly the same. We would hold, uh, you know, illegal, uh, legal Americans if, in fact, they were, uh, um, they were sent here. Unless, unless they came up with that bill, then they wouldn't have any more charges against them. And that's exactly why we want to be able to get the necessary uh, paperwork so we can start a deportation process or a review of that process, uh, you know, to make sure these people aren't released back in our community because they shouldn't have been here in the first place. Uh, what do you think is driving this? Wh yeah. Why? I mean, why would O'Malley push for this? And why are so many of these of his supporters uh, trying to disrupt the assembly, targeting you, vilifying, vilifying you, making you public enemy number one? I mean, it can't be because they want criminals back in their communities. So it has to be something else. What do you think it is? You know, Jeff, I wish I knew. You know, I, I, you, you hear all of these conspiracy theories. Are they really trying to, uh, you know, destroy the United States? Uh, um, are they just misguided? Uh, you know, they vilified ICE. I mean, the, the men and women who work in ICE have a very difficult job, but they're, they're fellow law enforcement officers. So I, I have no problem working with ICE. Uh, but they seem to vilify them at every chance they get. And, again, they're just hardworking Americans that have a, have a hard job to do. Um, Sheriff, let me ask you then one final question. How do you think this is all going to end? you think you will be successful in getting this program through? Or can anybody stop you? Can uh, If they organize enough protests or politically, is there any way they can prevent you from following through with your participation in this program? Now, Jeff, I think that's one of the good things about an independently elected person is uh, uh, we can pursue this. Uh, I think the only way it would start now, I think at the last hearing that ICE had uh, relative to reviewing applications for the program, there was something like 26 uh, sheriff's departments and police departments from across the country that had applied. Uh, so I, I think the only way would be if, uh, if you know, there was a, a sheriff's department that needed more than we do, or had more illegals in their community than we do, 
you know, they might fund those departments first. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm still going to pursue it. My neighbor, uh, both of my neighbors, Sheriff McDonald and Sheriff Hodgson in uh, uh, Bristol County and Plymouth County have already gone through this process, and their offices have already been trained. So uh, if I shouldn't get it, I will make sure that somehow my folks get transferred to one of them uh, before they release so that they can be checked out as well. So, uh, you know, I, I feel that strongly about protecting the public safety of the people on Cape Cod, and uh, I'm going to do that, uh, you know, no matter the cost. Sheriff, how big of a problem, I know I said it was the last question, but I promise, this is really the ultimate last question. How big of a problem is illegal immigration on the Cape? It, it's not a great problem at all. Uh, you know, we, uh, we maybe have... Uh, uh, ten or a dozen a year, so it's not like we get a lot. And uh, really, yeah, we we have a lot of uh, a lot of le- illegal immigrants here. As a matter of fact, I'm I'm going through a training class right now, and uh, in this training class, uh, uh, three individuals, two guys and a gal, who uh, came here from Poland and got their citizenship. I have a fellow from Nigeria who came here and got his citizenship. I already have an employee from Jamaica. So I mean, we we have no problem with immigrations as long as it's legal. Wow. So you're saying the Cape, this is not Boston or Somerville or Cambridge. No, we, we don't have any cities. We don't really have a metropolitan <laughs> area. You know, we're pretty much rural, so uh, we don't have a whole bunch of, uh, uh, I mean, we do have a whole bunch of Brazilian folks here, but they work very hard. They all have three jobs and uh, uh, don't get arrested. Now, what about Canadians like me? You got any Canadians down there, Sheriff? We we don't even consider Canadians immigrants anymore. They're the same. <laughs> we have been talking with Barnstable County Sheriff James Cummings, really one of the good guys. Sheriff, if you need anything, if those moon bats are giving you trouble, you need anything, you give us a call because we've got your back. Thanks, Jeff. A pleasure talking to you. God bless you. Uh, again, that was Barnstable County Sheriff James Cummings. I love this guy. I want you to think about this, okay? I want you to think about this. Here's a guy who's trying to prevent criminal, violent, illegal aliens from being set back, sent back into the community, sometimes into the very illegal immigrant communities. And the moon bats are saying, what are you doing? (laughs) You can't check their immigration status. We don't want them deported. Send them back. Just send them right into our communities. Just let let them out into the general population. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, so the Cooner Country poll question du jour, as the French would say, sponsored by Bill Kelly Financial Services. Do you think there sh- the backgrounds, should there be an immigration check, a background check on criminal, violent, illegal aliens in jail? Should the police be allowed to do a background immigration check on criminal, violent illegals who are currently in jail or in a correctional facility? If you believe the answer is yes, Jeff, it's just common sense, safety of the community comes first, text the letter A to 680680. If you believe, like a lot of the moon bats do on the Cape, Hell no, this is racism, discrimination, it violates the rights of all these illegals. Text the letter B to 680-680. As always, you can vote online at WRKO.com. More with your calls next. 222 here on the great WRKO. Okay, coming up at 235, you don't want to miss it. Stunning admission. One of Roy Moore's key accusers admits she forged the yearbook. Ay, ay, ay. But first, you know, I never cared for her, to be honest with you, from the beginning. But now I can't stand her even more. So the resistance movement, the Never Trump resistance movement, is now spreading, I swear to you, to the Olympics. To the Olympics. And leading the charge, as you know, the Olympics are set for February next year, 2018, in South Korea. There may not even be an Olympics at this point, because A, the weather may be horrible, and B, the mad midget rocket man, who knows, may target and blow up the Olympic Village. 
So everybody's worried about whether you should even send a team or delegations to the Olympics. But let that go. Let's say there will be an Olympics. So, skier Lindsey Vaughn, uber-liberal, went on the Clinton News Network, CNN, and says, listen, I take the Olympics very seriously, she said, and what they mean and what they represent. And she says, I hope to represent the people of the United States, not the president. So she says, when I go to the Olympics, I want everybody to know I'm representing the American people, but not President Trump. And then when asked, well, Lindsay, you know, I know you're 33 and maybe you're a little bit over the hill, pardon the pun, but if you do win, are you, are you going to go to the White House if you're invited to the White House? She says, absolutely not. So this woman who hasn't even won a gold medal yet, is already saying if Trump invites her, she's not going to the White House. Okay, Lindsay. Okay, Lindsay. Bravo, Lindsay. Bra Lindsay. Bravo. Bravo, Lindsay. So, okay. So you're going to represent the people of the United States, but you're not going to represent the president. Okay, Lindsay. All right, you go, girl. I mean, do you know how ridiculous this is? What she's trying to do now, it's so obvious, is now move the ha the resistance movement, the uh, hashtag resist, from the NFL, from the NBA, and now to try to politicize the Olympics. And she's hoping, obviously, to be a, like a female Colin Kaepernick and have other Olympians follow her. It's so clear what she's trying to do. Now, I want you to think about this. Do you know how many Olympic athletes probably couldn't stand Barack Hussein Obama? I don't know, take Sochi, when they went to the uh, Sochi Olympics in Russia. Did any of them go out and say, you know, when I win that gold medal or when I represent the United States, I'm representing the American people. I'm not representing Obama. No. No. Why not? Who cares? I mean, like you know, you don't think a lot of people during the, under Bush said, you know, I'm not going to represent Bush. I'm representing the American people, but I really, I didn't vote for Bush. I can't stand Bush. Okay, who cares? So you want to talk about a narcissistic, self-absorbed, almost egomaniac little child? Okay, that to me is point number one. That's Lindsey Vaughn. But then to me, the other point is this: you want to talk about liberal hypocrisy. This is coming now from the same woman who dated Tiger Woods for, what was it, three, four years, 2012 to 2015. She dated Tiger Woods after all the revelations of how he mistreated his wife, how he was, you know, sleeping around with all these other women, you know, how this guy was an absolute pig. So let me get this straight, Lindsay. You'll sleep with a sexual predator, but you'll date a sexual predator, but you just won't allegedly vote for an alleged sexual predator. Okay, I got that one. I got it, Lindsay. I got it. I got it. You'll roll in bed with him. You'll have a roll in the hay with him, but you just won't vote for an alleged sexual predator. I got your principles, Lindsay. I got them. You're not even going to win the gold medal. I'm telling you right now, all right, this is a desperate, pathetic attempt to get whatever little media attention she can still get because this woman now essentially is 33, she's had numerous injuries, and she's just trying to stay relevant. And now they're politicizing the Olympics. The Olympics. So here's what I propose that we do, Cooner Country. Let's boycott, if not the Olympics... Let's boycott the skiing portion of the Olympics. That's all. Like the NFL, you want to play this game? No problem. We don't have to watch you. We don't have to buy your merchandise. We don't have to have anything to do with you at all. Who even watches the skiing? I don't, I'll be honest. 
Like figure skating, that's fun. Hockey, that's fun. Yeah, uh, Grace watches the figure skating. I watch the hockey. But who watches skiing? Well, what about the luge? What about bobsledding? <laughs> bobsledding is kind of cool to watch. You watch the bobsledding? I don't. What about the? What is it? The um, with the guns on the skis? What do you call them? That they do cross country skiing, but then they do target practicing as well. The decathlon? Yeah, I guess so. The decathlon. What about that? You're going to watch that? or No. no. See, Skiing I... to me, I'm not, mm, not interested in that. You know, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff at the, uh, at the Olympics I frankly don't care about. But look, to me, if she's going to shoot her mouth off like this, then to me, let's just boycott the skiing portion of the Olympics. What do you think, Brittany? Or should we just boycott well, the Olympics? Well, yesterday I tweeted how I think I'm going to have to boycott the Olympics because I just have a feeling, Jeff, that it's not going to stop at Lindsey Vaughn, kind of like the NFL. It didn't stop with just Colin Kaepernick. It just kind of <laughs> was a vicious cycle there where everyone started kneeling. So I have a feeling that in the Olympics as well, um, we're going to see people protesting. I agree with you. I think president. she wants to start a wave, a trend. Because I think you're right that you know she's kind of irrelevant here. And how much this you want to bet? Last time that she skis, if she breaks a leg again, how much? How much you want to bet that if she does win a medal or some of these other moonbat Olympians? I guess that, it's a biathlon. I guess I was wrong. Well, whatever, okay, whatever it is, they're on the skis <laughs> and they shoot with the target practice. Okay, anyway, that they're going to take a knee. How much you want to bet during the national anthem they're going to take a knee? I will bet you the best steak dinner at a Hanover. You know that would be house. really upsetting if they took a knee. You're dealing with moon bats. I mean, it's the Olympics where you're, you know, you're representing your country and all the countries, you know, play against each other in sports. And it's awesome to get, the, you know, the gold medal and everything, Jeff. That would be really sad. That's where they're heading. I mean, she wants to now do to the Olympics what Colin Kaepernick did to the NFL. Wow. Great job, Lindsay. Whoa. We're so proud of you. Okay, my friends. Um, I'm not just here to clean up the liberal bowl. I am here to clean up your financial bowl. Do you toss and turn at night asking yourself, will I have enough money for retirement? Will my health care costs be covered? Will my family be okay? Well, you don't have to ponder alone. Go to the best in the business, Kelly Financial Services. I love them. This is a family business that served thousands of clients like you since 2003. Sit down with one of their retirement or financial experts. Call now, 888-800-1881. Ask for Bill Kelly's Safe Money Strategies Workbook. It's yours for free. Schedule an appointment to discuss a complete review of your retirement portfolio. Your retirement is too important to leave to the government. It's one of the most important calls you can make. Get the peace of mind you and your family deserve. 888-800-1881. Call 888-800-1881. The new Homeland Security Secretary is on the job. Evan Heidenrich has the latest in the WRKO Newsroom. Take it away, Evan. No, I won't be watching the curling either, uh, Brittany. Not a big, no, this uh, doesn't do it for me. We're back on, okay, 236 here on the great WRKO. Jeff Cooner, Boston's bulldozer, cleaning up the liberal bull. Huge, huge, stunning revelation on the Roy Moore issue, the, scan, the alleged scandal involving Roy Moore. We're going to get to that in a few minutes. But, sorry, can you say that again? Yes, yes. Um, before we get to John Boudris, the Cooner Country poll question of the day, sponsored by Bill Kelly Financial Services. You heard our interview with Barnstable County Sheriff uh, James Cummings. Should there be background checks on criminal, violent, illegal immigrants that are in jail or prison or in a correctional facility? If you believe the answer is yes, Jeff, it's just A, common sense. B, you want to keep, you know, the public and community safe, text the letter A to 680680. If you believe like the moon bats do on Cape Cod, nope. It violates their rights, their civil liberties. It's wrong. It's racist. 
text the letter B to 680680. As always, you can vote online at WRKO.com. Brittany, what are the poll results thus far? 99% yes, 1% no. <laughs> There's one, always one, one is it there? One moon bat, yeah. There's always one moon bat out there. <laughs> All right, joining us now uh, is John Boudros. He is the co-host of the Bill Kelly Financial Service Show. You can hear it here on WRKO tomorrow, every Saturday, 9 a.m. until noon. He's also known as Chef John. <laughs> Chef, what are you serving up for tomorrow's show, my friend? The, tomorrow's show, well... First of all, what I'm, uh, you've just got me out of the woods. I'm, I'm cu- cutting down my Christmas tree here up in, my, up in my farm. You know, it's this time of the year. Whoa, hold on. Are you up in New Brunswick? Busy. I am. I am. Whoa, up in the down, Great I'm White North. John, let yes, me ask yes. you this then. I've got to have to yes. ask you then. As somebody now who's on his farm up in New Brunswick, second home, uh, you know, Canada, they love winter sports, they love the Olympics, they love curling, hockey, everything, skiing. Lindsey Vaughn, famous skier, says that now she's not going to be representing Trump at the Olympics. She's just going to be representing the American people and the United States. I heard, I heard. What do you yes. think? R- rather dishonorable, I'd say. In my view, in my view it, it was one of the places that politics uh, was not found. It used to give us a little break from it all, and uh, I, I don't like it at all. I really don't. But, I, I mean, are you a big fan it. of skiing? Like, do you watch uh, the Olympics? No, do you watch I skiing? Wouldn't, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't watch skiing. <laughs> I would. I don't watch it anyway. I don't have a TV. I can't watch it. Are I you serious? You've got no. Television. Really, John? No, honestly, you have no TV up there in New Brunswick. Well, I mean, I could if I wanted to, but I choose not to. I, I may, you know, I don't, <laughs> so what do you, you got a radio? I take it you got a radio and you got a computer, I, correct? I, ha- I have a radio. I do have an internet connection. We, we don't travel by dog sled up here. We do have automobiles. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> but, you know, I'm t- I, they're, they're, it is a time of year, really, that you have to keep your eye on the ball because your, your, your financial uh, world can change very quickly if you don't do certain things before the end of the year. And I just wanted to remind our listeners you know, to keep that in mind and particularly to give the folks over at Kelly Financial a call to get their new publication, uh, 2018, by the numbers. Uh, Alexis is waiting right now. You give a call at 888-800-1881. She'll get you that publication. There's a digital version of it. And, and what you're going to use that for is to, uh, as kind of a roadmap, uh, to figure out what you want to do from now until the end of the year. You know, be, with the market being in the stratosphere, it might be time to take your profits and offset some, uh, capital gains or some losses. So, uh, this is the time of year to do it and give them a call for that booklet at 888 1881 John, what do you have on the cold? John, buddy, what do you have on store? 888-800-1881 is the number. John, what do you have in store for tomorrow's show? I believe, I hope I'm not uh, preempting anything. I think you have a very interesting interview on Hillary Clinton. No, that won't be coming until the following week. And that will be with Charles Ortel, uh, who, whom you might know tomorrow Back by popular demand is a guy that you might know, stands about 6364, has a loud, booming voice, and doesn't like Elizabeth Warren very much, and that would be you. Oh, like wow. Wait, wait, what, 200 pounds? About that. 195, yeah, yeah. 200? That's the guy. Very cut, yeah. very fit, six-pack abs? Real shy, kind of soft-spoken guy. Never kind of gets his dander up. (laughs) So we're going to be repeating that back by popular demand. And uh, we also have a nice little interview with Bob Montgomery, one of the uh, unsung heroes of the 1975 Red Sox World Series team. Didn't win the World Series, but uh, they played. So it would be a good show. Wonderful. You'll be on, obviously. Kelly Kelly will be on. Will William be on? Um, we will. No, William won't be making uh, an appearance on this show. 
we're going to do a little retrospective of actually it was my last time I saw Bill when I came down oh, okay. there. That's uh, nice. Yeah, we've got that one. But it will be a good show. William let me up will be on the next week. Please, everybody, tune in tomorrow. It's the Bill Kelly Financial Service Show. It's a very good show. Uh, 9 a.m. until noon. John Boudris is the co-host along with Kelly Kelly. Uh, he does some great bits, uh, really very good interviews, a lot of great information. Please, if you can, tune in tomorrow. And, John, if people want some more financial advice, you're right. Now is the time to do it. Give us that number one more time. Okay, the Kelly Financial Services number is 888-800-1881. Call right now. Alexis is waiting or call anytime. You'll always get someone when you call Kelly Financial Services. They always pick up the phone. Always. John, buddy, the chef. Keep serving up those steaks, my friend, and be careful. I don't want you to get hurt now getting that Christmas tree. (laughs) I I will. I'll bring you a wreath. (laughs) <laughs> John, okay. take care. God bless you, buddy. Bye now. All right, take care. 617-266-6868. Okay, lines are loaded. I'm going to dive into the phone lines. But first, I was waiting for this. I was waiting. And now, four days before the December 12 election, where Roy Moore and Doug Jones are now neck and neck in the polls, one of his key accusers, you remember her, Beverly Young Nelson, there was a huge uh, uh, brouhaha with her and Gloria Allred. If you remember, Gloria Allred called all of the media, the cameras, the TV, everybody was there, CNN, MSNBC, the entire national media, where she claimed that Roy Moore signed her yearbook and then uh, offered her a ride later took her behind the restaurant or the diner that she worked at then 60, at 16 years of age, and then sought or attempted to rape her in the car. It is one of the few accusers that have actually accused a crime against the judge. And the media went crazy with this story, saying this is the end of Roy Moore. He was a pedophile, a wannabe rapist. Well, listen to this. Remember she showed her yearbook, and right away I said... It's a forgery. You can tell by the ink font. You can tell by the way it's put together. It came out that Roy Moore was, in fact, the judge that presided over her divorce case. And he ruled against her. And that she stamped Roy Moore D.A. And he was never the D.A. It was the initials of his top aide on his court, Deborah Adams. And so they were asked repeatedly, if you remember, Roy Moore and his people were saying, we challenge you, we dare you, have an independent expert, somebody look at that inscription, because it is clearly a forgery. She superimposed it or forged it from the court documents in a 1998 divorce case and superimposed it upon a, well, what is it, 1977 yearbook. She's giving an interview now with ABC News' Tom Lamas. And she admits it. She forged it. But look how ABC News all tries to cover up and move on as quickly as possible from this damning admission. Roll it, Brittany. Young's proof that she knew more? Her yearbook with this inscription. But Moore and his supporters have called into question that inscription, noting the writing under the signature appears to be different. Let's look at Beverly Nelson. Everybody knows her yearbook is a forgery. Nelson says she did make notes to the inscription, but the message was all Roy Moore. Beverly, he signed your yearbook. He did sign it. And you made some notes underneath. Yes. (laughs) First of all, first of all, Notice how ABC News is trying to help her explain it away and almost downplay it. In other words, there were notes, right? There were, there were notes, right? Yeah, yeah, there were notes. No, well, there were more than notes. It was a forgery. It was a forgery. That to me is point number one. Point number two, what is to me absolutely incredible, Lamis just moves on. 
In other words, you've got a bombshell of a story. I say, whoa, 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 whoa. Why did you lie? If this guy genuinely attempted to rape you as you claim, why would you want to lie and add to his signature or whatever his inscription on the yearbook? Why would you do that? Why would you deliberately forge a document? Instead, he just quickly moved on. In other words, I don't want to touch it. Just go, 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 quick, quick, quick. In other words, okay, it's not quite kosher on the up and up. Let's move. Let's move. We got, we, hey, we got to take down this quote unquote Bible thumper. This Christian conservative, this Trump conservative, he's got to go. She's a forger and she's a liar. Because she denied it for weeks and weeks and weeks. And now she has to admit the obvious. My friends, I am telling you, I am telling you, this was part of a major political witch hunt to bring Roy Moore down. And now one more accuser has fallen. I told you she was a liar, and now she's all but admitted she's a liar. 617. 266-6868. Okay. Bob in New Hampshire, who apparently has a beef with me. Go ahead, Bob. Here you go, Jeff. Here it is. You're so quick. You stereotype everybody. You're going to boycott skiing in any conservative skier or anybody that's pro-Trump because you don't like one skier. Talk about letting somebody win a battle with you. You know, there's plenty of people that are conservative that represent the United States of America and the president when they go to the so you don't boycott all the Olympics because Jeff Kuhner doesn't like one person. Bob, I, 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 Bob, stereotype. Are, are you still there, Bob? Yeah. You know I was kidding, right? No, you, no, Jeff, I think you were pretty serious. No. <laughs> First of all, didn't you catch me saying I never watch skiing? But it There's nothing to boycott. Saying, and then I was well, making I, fun of curling and bobsledding and the luge. And I was saying I never watched the Olympics, maybe a little bit of the hockey. Like, look, Bob, I don't know how to tell you this. I, I, there's nothing for me to boycott. I don't watch skiing. But I don't yeah, watch listen. downhill skiing. I don't watch country across country skiing. Okay, okay. and say 400 other schemes. I, I get your point. But let me just say this, Jeff. You're the, you're the, you're the sp- so you're somebody that's on the radio. You made your point. You got your point across to a listener. I listen to you all the time and agree with you 99% of the time. But you were making a point that made me think that you're telling people, hey, boycott it because Lindsey Vaughn doesn't like Trump. That's, such a, that's exactly the point you made. No, I'm saying, li- you're, you're, honestly, you're no, no, Trump Bob, look, Trump Bob, Trump. Bob, I'm having a little bit of fun. It's Friday. It's the weekend. Uh, I thought it was pretty clear. But, Bob, look, let me say this. What I'm saying is boycott Lindsey Vaughn. That's fine. That's all you that's, have to That's say. what I'm saying. I'm saying boycott that's Lindsey Vaughn. The problem I have, Bob, is I never watch Lindsey Vaughn. So how can I boycott Lindsey Vaughn? You see my conundrum. You made a point. I'm just saying that there's veterans, there's conservatives, there's plenty of people that like, enjoy the Olympics, and give their soul and heart to become competitive. Yes, no, no question and, about it. And win something for this country and for the friggin' president. Bro, yes, you know, well, I, mean, I don't care. I mean, uh, look, Bob, to be honest, to me, the president is irrelevant. You're, you're, you're competing for your country, and you're the citizens of your country. Whether you like the person in office or not is really yeah, almost, to me, irrelevant. Know. There but, you go. You made your point. But, uh, no, Bob, really, Bob, please, look, uh, honestly, look, I know there are some very good people who compete in the Olympics. My only fear, if you want a serious point, here's my serious point. My serious point is I'm worried, and I won't be surprised if this starts a trend. I think what she's trying to do, and I'm, now I'm being serious, is she obviously wants to be Colin Kaepernick. She wants others to follow her lead. So she wants others to come out and say, I'm a never-Trumper. I resist the president. I'm not uh, competing for him or representing him. I'm representing the American people. And I will not be surprised if they win a medal or a gold medal and their flag is being um, displayed and the anthem is being played, that they will take a knee. She hasn't said that. All I'm saying is, don't be shocked. 617-266-6868. But no, look, I'm not calling for an Olympic boycott or even a skiing boycott, because I don't care enough to boycott. No, I'm not uh, snowboarding. I'm not going to watch that. The ski jumping, I don't care for that either. By the way, aren't there different kinds of ski jumping? Like, isn't there like one like 80 meters and another one 100 meters? Or 
which I never quite understood. But anyway, but let that go. Just I'm I'm just not I'm just I'm not into the Winter Olympics. Outside of hockey, I really couldn't care less. But anyway, Lindsey Vaughn now says she's not representing the president. She's representing the country at the Olympics. Okay, good for you, Lindsey. So, you know, she dated Tiger Woods for, what is it, three, four years? So she'll sleep with a sexual predator. She just doesn't want to vote for an alleged sexual predator. Okay, Lindsey, you showed us. Boy, you're a very principled woman. It's just incredible. Andy in Nebraska. Go ahead, Andy. Hey Jeff, I think with the I think with the what what has come out that the uh, the yearbook was forged uh, forged it shows how, just how far the globalist machine will go to stop anyone who dare opposes it. Andy, I'm completely with you, and I mean at this point, if she admitted that she's a for you know that she forged it, what re- what what credibility does she or and Gloria I mean, Allred have left? If the uh, as seems likely, the judge will win. When despite these accusations, that just really shows how error shows how prevalent this movement against the globalists really is. If or if someone accused uh, accused of all this can win, I mean, it really sky's the limit. Oh, I'm with you, Andy. No, I'm with you. Look, this this is a bombshell revelation, and I think this may put Judge Moore over the top. Do not be surprised now if he wins on Tuesday. Skippy and Southie, go ahead, Skippy. Hey, Jeff, uh, Lindsay Vaughn, she took a page right out of Kathy Griffin's playbook there. You know, the one that had the fake seven head. Uh, just start trying to be relevant, starving for attention. And this is not the no for this Vaughn. When you remember, she took up with Tiger Woods when no normal woman could put up, come in with a 50 foot pole because <laughs> the evidence of her, hear him going out with every kind of porno doorknob. <laughs> that means everybody had a turn except me, of course. But, but she must be vying for a slot on the view so she can surround herself with all those other big hot wind bags. Oh, she, Skippy, I think you nailed it. I think she realizes her career is pretty much over, and she's like, hmm, <laughs> hey, hey, is there an opening on The View? <laughs> Vinny in Georgia. Go ahead, Vinny. Hey, Jeff, uh, doing well down here, and I want to say maybe uh, some others will not boycott watching the Olympics, the Winter Olympics, but I will be, and I also plan, when I saw that, disgraceful, disgraceful uh, uh, interview this morning, I will be calling the, the American National Olympic Committee and telling them if she's on the team, if they permit her on the team, I will never watch Winter Olympics, it's, uh, Winter Olympics again, and I love the hockey teams. Yeah, I'm with you, Vinny. Look, I, I love, to me, the Olympics, it's all about the hockey. I love yeah. every game. I try to watch every game. Yeah. No, I, to me, uh, Vinny, I'm just going to boycott Lindsey Vaughn, which really is no, no, <laughs> it's no effort. It's no sweat off my uh, my brow, as they say. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, yeah. So, everybody on Team USA, go USA, go, except for Lindsey Vaughn. The voice of Boston is you. 680 WRKO Boston, 937 WEEI HD2 Lawrence Boston. It's 3 o'clock.